this is very common with like social media and with people not completely knowing each other that well, I guess. But you know, we all have that person we follow where you look at their life and you're like, it is just perfect. Or you look at, you know, something that they do or something that they preach and you're like, they're perfect about this all the time. Or they do, I don't know, they do this perfectly, they do that perfectly, their kids, you know, like there's like parents that I follow that are all about peaceful parenting and stuff. And sometimes I'm like, wow, how do I, how are they so perfect? They're the perfect parent. When in reality, they probably lose their temper every once in a while. They're probably not, there's, there's probably stuff that they're working on with their kids, you know, that they're not so great at and it's something that they preach. So um, we wanted to talk about our successes with Bear Struck lifestyle and also the things that we need to work on because there's honestly a lot that we can work on. We're, we're still compromising a lot in terms of um, Veristruck lifestyle. You know what I mean? Yeah, so Veristruck is ultimately a verb. You can think of the verb uh, to construct, to... To build truth is what it... To, dis means. to destruct. Um, those are verbs. So Veristruct is a verb in the same vein. You just switch out the con or the D for vera. So instead of break apart or um, build up or build or, or put with, you know, put things is together. What, is that what con means? Yeah, con means with. Okay. Um, it's a derivative of the Latin cum. Anyway. Of course. Vera means truth. So it's a process. It's not something that we have perfectly down, and nor should we. I think, I think it's very unrealistic, inhuman, and quite frankly not very struck to assume that someone has to have everything perfectly down the moment that they know it. Um, I think there's something terribly wonderful, and I mean that literally, it's wonderful and terrible, that humans know can know so much better than they're capable of doing in their lives. And so that we're no exception to that. Anyone you might find is no exception to that. And they might put their best foot forward per se, like you said, with social media yeah, and say, we are this way. And, um, this is, this is a, for all, for all intents and purposes, this is a philosophy channel. So we're not, we're not, We've got nothing to hide. It's not like, hey, check out this awesome place. Oh, by the way, it's not real. It's a Potemkin village, you know? See? It's like, no, it's not yeah. a Potemkin village. Yeah. It's not a facade. It is real. And we'd love to show you the, the, you know, the parts that we're not doing wonderfully, but... Also the parts that we're doing okay at. Well, the parts we're doing okay at, and then what our hopes and dreams are. Um, yeah. In the end, isn't that what's most important? is what we're trying to achieve and you know if what we're, we're not giving up on even more so exactly what you're trying to achieve over a long period of time you're persistently doing isn't that the most important thing in the end and and yeah we are responsible for uh, the bad things and the good things that we do um in the moment right right but verstruct is a verb this is never was never intended to be a and Way we said that someone. and we said this in the last video this was never meant to be an end in of itself it was never meant to be this utopia that you're constantly striving for but never attain verstruct is something you attain whenever you do it that's mm, why it's a verb i like that so before we get into more do you mind if i say a few things go ahead please give this video a like if you're enjoying it so far um, also, if you just feel like it, because it's pretty easy to do, um, and that's what it, that's what the thumbs up looks like, in case you didn't know. And, um, definitely subscribe to our channel if you like philosophy, if you like nature, if you like plants, if you like new perspectives. Right. It's a good place to come and listen to new stuff. I think over time people are going to realize that it's, 
um, that Verastruct is something worth listening to, even if you don't necessarily agree completely. So I think I think that's a good reason to subscribe. Is you want to maybe learn, confront a few? Maybe learn some new things. Yeah. Maybe you know, maybe get different perspectives, and uh, we'll figure this out. Yeah. So, um, what else did you want to say? That was that was the gist of it. I just wanted to do a little hey, like and subscribe thing. But I mean, I. I have a lot that I could say on this. Um, so as a verb, we're trying to do the best that we can. Yeah. And um, Verastruck does look one particular way, but the, the way to, like I said, it's not an end in of itself. It does have a potential future involved. But, um, and that could be quite specific. But what we're doing now, what each of us is doing now to achieve that goal is is very personal. And that's why, you know, that's why the idea of hypocrisy is um, both important but also not important. So on the one end, it's like, yeah, you shouldn't be hypocritical. You should be trying to achieve your goals in life. But we're not all on the same page. So you might be further along with, with nutrition or something else than even we are. But it's we're very likely. <laughs> but it's guaranteed. I almost guarantee that we're further along in at least a few ways than pretty much everybody on the planet. Because <laughs> we're the only ones that are really doing very strict. True. That's true. Um, so here's how I think we should format this um, for everyone's viewing ease. So I think um, let's go ahead and talk about what we're doing right now that's Verastruct. Okay. And we can go into um, what we are working on and what we really want to do, what our hopes and dreams are. Maybe yeah, those, those things three. that we're good at, some things that we're not so good at, but we're working on. So you know? maybe things we're doing presently, things that we want to do in the immediate future, and then things we want to do in the far future. Sure. Sure. Okay. That's great. So behind us, you can see we have a bunch of plants. And uh, these are a small selection <laughs> of the plants that we have in our home. We have a lot. And uh, do we have enough? No. Um, believe it or not. Believe it or not. And I haven't done a proper count, mostly because we have lots of clumps of plants. And they have lots of babies. You can see these monsteras back here. So if I were to like count each individual plant, that gets difficult. Maybe it might be easier for me to measure based off of biomass. Maybe that would be an easier. That's but even I then, I don't, I don't think that would be that easy. Needless to say, we have quite a bit. Um, in, in layman's terms, we probably have somewhere like 300 medium-sized plants. And that's being maybe a little conservative. I think that's being a little conservative. Anyway. I mean, we got, we've got a seven foot tree right over here, another one over there, another one over there. And then that one's like nine feet a tree. Yeah, I don't know how we're going to contain that one. Anyway. So we have trees in our home, several, like not just one, several. <laughs> Are they completely full? No, they're rather full though. The, the ficus elastica could be more full. So, but then we've got um, lots of pretty large ones. We're working on ivies that are crawling up our walls here in the living room. And when those start getting high enough, they're, they're pretty high right now that some of them are starting to become what I would call large plants, you know, where they have a good, you know, couple hundred, maybe even a thousand leaves. They don't have a thousand leaves, yes, but a but couple hundred leaves. Yeah. <laughs> And you know, they've crawled up the walls seven feet. Well, I'd call that a large plant at that point. Yeah. But um, as time goes on, as the years go by, I imagine these ivies actually being the largest plants in our home. Oh, definitely. Because they will crawl up the walls and hopefully the ceiling a little bit and down the hallways. That'll be so fun. And maybe across some of the windows and we'll have to snip, snip, snip when they get too so, large. And honestly, we can, 
we can propagate those. So we'll have tons of ivy in the coming years. The plants are kind of an ongoing thing. I mean, I mean, very strict in general doing these practices. It's an ongoing thing. But yeah, we're slowly increasing the amount of plants in our home. And um, I think... And the ones that we do have are getting bigger. Yeah. They're having babies. Once we figure out how to manage these, and these are more settled, because some of them still aren't completely potted in the containers that we That's have. True. But once they're more settled, I think we'll be getting some more for our bedrooms. Yeah, um, we'll be filling out the other rooms. Yeah. But we're probably, I have, like I said, I haven't really crunched the numbers, but let's just put it this way. We're not, we're not a majority of the way to replenishing our um, oxygen that we breathe and getting rid of all the chemicals in the air but we are a significant percentage of the way there which is remarkable um, if you don't know the numbers for that it's essentially two medium-sized plant per per square foot which is a ton you have to fill a lot of the surface area with plants well, and so we're going to achieve that really well with ivies that's a very efficient way of achieving that as well. Yeah, ivies we don't have to install plants everywhere. They're just growing. If you have on the one walls. really big ivy plant growing, that could constitute as a good twenty to fifty to maybe even a hundred medium-sized plants. So there you go. You got that's fifty square foot <laughs> taken up just by wall space. So yeah. you're actually not taking square. You know horizontal square feet you're taking vertical square feet that's incredibly helpful and then if you have trees you know one tree if it's a big enough tree can be as much as 20 or 30 medium-sized plants right so it does depend on the tree and we chose this house on purpose the the place that we live most to, people choose their houses on purpose to maximize sunlight yeah we we like our house it was not our first choice, but it has the best, I think it has the best sunlight out of all the other houses that yeah. we looked at. Yeah. Um, and it has a good amount of space. So making that choice, making that choice to live in a place where you can maximize plant, um, plant space is, that's another very struck thing to I do. Think, I think one of my favorite parts, I think it is a very struck thing to, thing to live in a place where there is a lot of natural light mm -hmm. because, I mean- Circadian rhythm Circadian too. rhythm is a really big thing, mm -hmm. um, but it does kind of help us be more in tune with the day, I think, with That's the rhythm too. of the day. That's very um, true, actually. Yeah. I have felt a lot more in tune with the day. It doesn't mean I make that great of choices when it comes to when to sleep and when to wake up. Right. But uh, it's a lot easier to make those choices. Yeah. It doesn't feel like I have to, it's not a chore so much to go along with it. And honestly, maybe this is a negative thing, but I feel so a part of the environment around us mm -hmm. that I don't as much, I guess, feel a need to go <laughs> outside because it's like, it's so prominent. Like well, we're quite frankly, we it. almost have more life in the house space than there is in the outside space. But really, it's true. Almost, almost. It's true. We're it's amazing. Gonna... We're in the desert, but there still is so much life. It's incredible. Yeah, there's a lot of life here. Life is here. wonderful. Life prevails. Um, so that also is the main reason we're doing that with the plants is for our air health. Air health, for sure. Um, air health, there's lots of benefits for having house plants, but that's ultimately what we're trying to achieve. And that's, that's our biggest goal. And that's the biggest risk, uh, health risk today. And therefore also the biggest source of joy that you can have with Veristruct is with plants in your life. Tending to plants. Having a relationship. Reaping the benefits. Yeah, that's why we talk about having a relationship with the plant. Because if right. it's a plant that produces food, obviously you're trying to maximize its food output and make sure that it has a good life. If it's an air plant, then you're just trying to appreciate the foliage. Anyway, you get the idea. Yeah. Is that with that, we're, we're a significant percentage along the way. And that that's a lot farther than almost anyone on the planet quite frankly we're in the very high percentile of that and 
if there's one thing you could do that's Verastruck, that would, that would be it. Um, we live in the desert, and so there's not enough rainwater to produce enough water for everyone living out here. It wasn't our first choice to live out here in the desert. I have to live here for work, um, though I'm trying to dispute that <laughs> so that we can live somewhere where it's sustainable because we want to live someplace sustainable. But since we have to, we have a uh, water filtration system because otherwise we would collect rainwater. So yeah. that, that, this is maybe like what we're trying to do to be very struck now, but we very much know the well, we're trying the to put artificiality of clean it. Clean water on our bodies, and right? Not on and in our bodies, on and that's in, what's clean. most. Yeah. That's what. That's the most bare strict part about it, I think. But yeah, the, the I, means is. Yeah. Well, the problem is that, especially, and I think this is in a lot of places in the United States, is that water is being it isn't present as much in like the water is being. I, I'm. I'm hesitating use the word shipped out to you well yeah it's it's not exactly they have giant they have giant uh canals yeah i guess canals is what you would call them i forget what they call them but they <laughs> they have giant they're huge and they send large amounts of water across state lines through these things yeah and they get nasty they and then they process it them. here but it, the processing that they do is mostly just to cover up it's Chemical. It's chemical. It's all this stuff. And it's not filtering very much. So in the future, we want to live to, in a place that, where there is enough water to sustain us that falls on our land. And that way we don't have to... Yeah, the rainwater is good to go. I mean, it's a little acidic for humans, but plants like acidic water. So it's good for them. Mm -hmm. And otherwise, there's not a whole lot of particulate in it. it there's, there's the the chemicals that create the acidity are, are not that intense. So you're usually good to go. The plants love it. So we might get some alkaline stones. Anyway, this is maybe <laughs> far future stuff. But yeah. having alkaline stones from our property, so testing the pH balance of all the stones on our property, collecting the ones that are alkaline, and then using those... Um, I forget is limestone alkaline. I forget, but we'll we'll see because we we'll do have we have some limestone on our property. So um, alkaline rocks and put those in the water so that it's better pH balance for us. That way we're not getting heartburn every time we're drinking water. <laughs> that would be Though, unfortunate. No, well that's probably not what would happen. We'd probably just get used to it. But yeah. Um, anyway, so that's distant future is a rainwater catching system in a sustainable part of the world where you can have rainwater. And, and unless you think, oh, there's not enough places like that, it's really only recently that we've decided to live in the desert and to ship water out into the desert. Yeah. Um, there's, been, there's plenty of places for people to live where even we could have up to like 50 billion people living in areas where it's sustainable water where they can get all their water from rain yeah so um i so it's not yeah it's not that weird of a, requ a request to say oh i want to live in the part where 50 billion people could live right <laughs> when we have how many on the planet right so i want 7.8 i want to talk about um circadian rhythm just really quickly go for it again um this is something that we've been able to do better at since we've lived here we're still not the best um for our son especially um we try to we never turn on like any lights in our house unless we're going into one of the bathrooms that doesn't have a window but even then we just like leave the door open <laughs> Right. nobody else is here um but yeah we don't turn on any lights and we found that it's when wonderful. we do it it's well it's been interesting because we've been able to see evidence of that following the rhythm of the day helps our son to be more tired so like if we resort to turning on a light or he looks at a screen you know when it's supposed to be darker That's a light. right <laughs> yeah a screen is a light yeah well, screen also has stimulation with it. Right. But so it has like that. sounds and anyway. So 
anyway, we've been able to see a difference in that. And, and we also see a difference yeah, in we, ourselves. Yeah, yeah, in ourselves. Yeah. So I just think following the rhythm of a day is a very, very strict thing to do. And I think we've gotten closer to that. Yeah. We're definitely mm -hmm. not perfect, but we've no. gotten closer to that. Correct. We like watching movies at night. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Um, though we try to do it around like six instead of like nine. Right. So that yeah, there's still a little bit of light outside, but still. Yeah. We usually end up doing more like seven. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so that's one thing we're working on. But eventually we do want to get to a position where, um, like, I don't know how we're going to do any electricity in the future. Uh, there isn't really any good sustainable method of electricity. The best one right now is probably nuclear. But we don't have access to um, that. But we don't have access to that, and we wouldn't in any place where we were catching rainwater for our, for <laughs> our water. So we'd probably end up in a situation where we're straight up not using electricity whatsoever because solar panels are incredibly toxic to make and then to dispose of slash they can't be disposed. Um, wind turbines even more toxic to make but um, the main issue with them is that they just take up a bunch of space in disposing of them. There's a lot of material. Um, I think it, I think it, anyway, I think it can be used in other uses so it can be recycled but solar panels straight up cannot many yeah. of the components cannot be recycled we would absolutely love to be in a situation where we do not have to use electricity right now we are right. saying this as we're using electricity so it's tricky um and i think that kind of ties but the goal is important and so oh, it's it like totally is. and so it's like what are we what are we doing in the meantime well in the meantime we're trying to limit devices the average american has something like five devices mm -hmm. per person so in our family we've got somewhere more like one and a half per person yeah maybe even less we have this one this one this one and then that so one so micah has an ipad I we have, have some a... old we have some old devices but the idea is that that the average american has like five active devices you know they've right. got some kind of watch fitbit tracker on on the wrist they've got a phone they've got a tablet they have a laptop and then they have a computer or a TV of some sort. And that's per person. This isn't like, oh, they share a tablet and they share a laptop. It's like, no, they have yeah, we kinda all share, the above. We have, we have. Instead, we share one computer that's tied to, that's technically tied to the TV. So it's just technically one device. It's a TV computer setup. We have one tablet, one smartphone, and one regular phone. Yeah, a regular phone we just use it as personal hotspot. So that's us trying to limit electric use. And we try to limit, we don't have any Wi-Fi. Yeah, we don't have Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi has, um, we, we try to lower our expo exposure to any electromagnetic yeah. stuff. And eventually when we don't have electricity, we also will not have cellular service of any kind. So No, we won't on our that, property. That electromagnetic spectrum will be very not lit <laughs> it will yeah. not light up yeah on our property well, and where and we I, live and i was just thinking that electricity i think a way that people use electricity a lot and they don't think about it as much and how convenient it is is cooking yes and so Correct. i feel like our um just our ability we eat more raw than than the average person we do eat more raw more than raw more person. vegetable yeah. and less meat mm -hmm. than the average person. Mm -hmm. There are definitely people who are better at us. Definitely. At that. But I've found that on the average, even people who are like self-proclaimed vegans, they have a period of veganism. So if we just stay consistent, then we're, we're doing pretty good. And then if we get to the point where we can't cook. No, I had a period of veganism. Exactly, you yeah. had a period. Yeah, that's what I'm, yeah. I'm just saying, so yeah, I did that. So for consistent, yeah. then. I really, I really like the plant slant diet. And I will say I base, we base our diet off of um, our church standards, um, well, the, the word of wisdom. And we, and we also, um, we also base it off of um, the diet that's outlined 
by um, the blue zones and that is blue zones are where people have the longest lives well those are just secondary though right like um you know you and me primary is is our is our religious beliefs but verstruck states explicitly it's there's no confusion there it's a you know, less processed the less processed yeah and less processed okay. naturally or artificially um you can make cyanide in the pigs in the bellies of pigs that is stronger than anything you could create artificially. So Verstruck doesn't necessarily have a position on whether it's artificial or natural processing. Yeah. If it's processing, it's processing. So in that perspective, meat is always going to be more processed than vegetables and fruits. Why? Because you, meat eats the same fruits and vegetables that you would have eaten and has processed them in the body of the animal. So the animal is more processed. It's, it's that simple. And then obviously, is, has humans been involved with it? Have they given antibiotics, all kinds of stuff? That is more process. So ultimately, it comes down to how much has this stuff been processed? And we know that there's natural you know, condensed materials as well. Yeah, You course. know, poisons that are natural. But they're a lot less common than you would think. And usually when they do exist, they're the kind that makes your tummy grumble instead of kill you. Makes your tummy <laughs> grumble. Makes your tummy grumble. Well, and so the, to be very direct about this, whole foods not always cooked, um, plant-based foods grows from the ground. We believe that that is the most like we don't we don't take any like supplements or anything like that yeah. because well I still have a hard time deciding whether cutting is a problem because if you think about it your teeth cut the food so I guess it's kind of hard to avoid cutting right but if you think of something like garlic when you cut it that does release um, chemicals that are good for you and and yeah. So it's it has like a you nutri need to eat it whole. Yeah, it, it, the so as soon as you can eat the garlic in the act of it being broken up, you know it's it's the uh, what is it called? Not the bulb. The oh, spicchio is what it's in Italian. Sorry, the spicchio, clove. the clove. <laughs> as soon as you break the clove wall, uh, the better. Interesting. Yeah. So I, now I'm so even myself. so even cutting to some degree would be a process that could be construed as a process. So it's not about like no process at all, though that would be preferable. <laughs> yeah, I should no just process bite at in, all. Bite into an onion with the skin on. Yeah, there might be some benefit to that. There might be. It yeah. is. It is from the earth. So why yeah, not? Yeah, we have the tendency of, for instance eating the orange with the peel off but the peel has nutrient and certain properties so eating it straight up is beneficial to some degree so so needless to say we're nowhere near that we're you know we're more towards the average as opposed to the ideal with mm -hmm. that so we're working on that. And one of the ways to do that is by growing our own food. So, um, and yeah, Verastrict would have you grow all of your food if, all, if at all possible. Yeah. But if you must, you can eat other people's food, of course, but preferably it's a vegetable or a fruit. Extremely, hy it's hyper local. Well, I mean, that's nice and all, but the main point of having it be local for Verstruct wouldn't be because it's econo it makes economic sense. That's normally what I know, it's for. I know. It's because it's really difficult to have fresh fruit from Australia yeah. <laughs> when you're living in the United States of America and vice versa. Yes. You want a fresh tomato from that country? Very unlikely it's fresh when yeah, it's, it's not. Been shipped. When it's been shipped long distances. Yeah. And yeah, uh, that's, that's the I mean. important part. And, and quite frankly, with everything Verastruck, this isn't just to be like, oh, this is what you need to do, like it's a chore. It's like you honestly feel better. 
the food tastes better that way. It, it's not, it's not some, it's not some oh you better or else. It's one of those like no you you straight up will enjoy the apple more. Do you know what I mean? You'll straight up enjoy your food more. Yeah, I totally agree. When you have a good fresh fruit, it's it's better than candy. Like it's not even a competition. Like your brain has a hard time deciding which one's better, but your mouth does not. Your mouth has no problem deciding who's the winner in that situation. It's it's the fruit. Mm -hmm. And it's because it just tastes fantastic and it has this yeah. complexity of flavor that just can't just can't be mimicked. Yeah, very strict. The, the idea of the lifestyle is that your body is going to literally feel better and you're going to enjoy your life more. Yeah. It's not, it's not just about the rules, oh, this isn't good, so I can't do it. It's, right. This is going to make you feel better. Correct, exactly. Yeah. Like, we're always talking about dieting, but honestly, if you're eating the right food, A, it tastes amazing, but there's no reason to stop eating. Yeah. There is no eating too much. Like I was trying to explain that to someone. I was like, have you ever had a salad that you really, really liked? Like not a salad you didn't like. If you've never had a salad you haven't liked yet, I'm sorry, I'm sorry for you. <laughs> there is one out there. But it, you know, when you've had that salad that you really, really like, there's no reason, there's no scientific, you know yeah, there's no scientific evidence that you shouldn't eat until you're crazy full eat of that full, salad. For sure. Until you're just like, no, I can't, possibly eat anymore yes. well that's there is no dieting with vera struct it's just eat what tastes good that makes you feel good long term has no side effects it's fresh eat as much as you want there is no diet yeah. and eat as much variety as you like do you know what i mean there's so many like for instance we only eat 0.1 of the edible uh, plant produce. Oh yeah, there's in so the world. much. So yeah, we're nowhere clear, close. You we know, when people know. are like, "Hey, check out these acai berries," it's like, "Yeah, go for it, man," because it's like there's so much out there that we're not eating. Yeah, that includes all these new things that we've been eating lately. Yeah, the earth That's has amazing. so much to offer. Mm -hmm. So so much to offer, and we haven't even scratched the surface. You know. Okay. Um, which is so beautiful and so cool and that's something that we want to get into is foraging um, I, I think we've talked about this you know other times but we definitely want to get into foraging right. and understanding which plants are edible which plants we can use medicinally if we need to right um, you know so I I've definitely wanted to do that. And I think that's something that we're going to get into even more when we live in the next place that we want to live in. Well, hopefully, but th there's a lot of opportunity here. Yeah, you know, we is. found out about Palo Verde beans. They're, they taste great. <laughs> they really do. You ever had sugar snap peas? Well, they're better than sugar snap peas. And they grow in the desert. And it's amazing. Yeah. And so we found out about those and we found out about um, natal plums. Wow, that was one of the best fruit I've ever had was a natal plum. They're fantastic. They grow in the desert. So it's, we do have an opportunity here and we know a little bit, but basically nothing. Yeah, basically nothing. That's so that's another can. thing that we're wanting to get into and do. Yeah. So we could talk for a long time about this. We could. I just want to get real quickly. No, we'll save it for another time. Ooh. The the far future we'll save for another time. Yeah, the far future. I think you'll find it very intriguing. We'll do it for our next video, um, our next you know new content video. So we've that talked we a little bit about our present and what we're doing in the uh, near the future. Media, yeah. And that even includes like 10, 20 years from now. But we'll get into the far future, which is really exciting. So thanks for watching. Yeah. You are a deep fountain of unique identity of our structure. And we wish you a lovely day.